focus on that mid lane when it comes to the Banshee and what Kowtard's going to go for. My instinct is telling me Yasuo, though. It's something that he can run with, but Rasio, well, Yasuo will have a fairly difficult time in the laning phase against Orion, obviously thanks to the range and the zoning power that uh, Froggen's going to have with his command attacks. What I do like about the Orion lock-in from Alliance is because you've got five and a half mid lane bands, Lulu who can go top and middle, it means that Froggen has locked a, a, a secured a champion that has a very strong laning phase that can bully most of the champions that you want to run middle. And it also limits some of your options. Uh, keep in mind, Froggen also set one of the fastest 300 CS records just two weeks ago on this very champion. And he actually told me earlier on, Joe, how many Wraith camps do you think mid laners are going to take today? And I said, well, honestly, Frog and I've got no idea what's that for a question. Uh, and actually, I should have probably expected it since he's picking Orianna into this one. So giving me some hints without actually giving me any hints in reality. We'll see what Alliance actually lock in here. Cogmore for Tabs, who looks a little bit tired there having a big yawn. I'm just saying, guys, probably not going to be Teemo. No, I don't think it will be. I want to highlight what Copenhagen Wolves have locked around this rise. They've got late game scaling, a strong front line with Rise. It is counterbalanced by obviously a strong laning phase uh, ganking jungler in the form of Lee Sin. Youngblood is not really the type that I would imagine taking Lee Sin top, and the only reason I call that out is how well Soas has done with it this week. Regardless, what I'd like to see from Woolite and the rest of the Wolves is this Lee Sin and Twitch roaming around, maybe trying to help out Rise in the early stages of the game. And if they can accelerate the rate at which he can find kills and arm opportunities, that might help Copenhagen Wolves in the long run. But they don't have a super strong early to mid-game team fight because they need items on both Rise and potentially Jax in the scenario. Yeah, Wolves. If you think back to the last time they played Alliance Scores, the last game in London, it was actually a really, really good game where Alliance looked to be getting off to that typical Dream Alliance start of getting kills, taking towers and what have you. But the Wolves showed some real character to hold on to that one. And they're going to have a similar thing on their hands today where they're getting stronger as things go on, as Rise builds up, as Jax builds up. They've also picked in Brom as a support. So this kind of composition that you see from the Wolves, Alliance has already defeated this week. Um, when they took down the Super Hot crew, Alliance were up against a late game scaling team. And, uh, you know, they handled them very, very well. They bought time. If I'm looking back at the... Uh, team composition, it was Brown, it was Shivana, and it was Rise for Super Hot Crew. Alliance got an early lead, then all of a sudden Super Hot Crew were winning some team fights in the mid, mid to late game, and Alliance just moved around the map and forced objectives in a smarter time frame. For Copenhagen Wolves, the key is going to be getting Jax unlocked while simultaneously getting Rise farm. If either of them can get kills, obviously that's a big bonus. And the tools to allowing the split push and getting those lanes working, in my opinion, will be good roaming from either this Woolite Twitch or Airwax on Lee Sin. Because if they don't get ahead, it's going to be fairly easy for a Shivani Elise Oriana combo to get damage down on a fairly linear type of team composition from Copenhagen Wolves not to get off to a good start. And therefore, you have to say that Airwax is probably the key man once again here for the Copenhagen Wolves. Bit of power, extra early power there with Lee Sin. We'll see if he can actually get things rolling either for Youngbuck in the top lane or Kaltard in the middle. For Alliance though, as you mentioned, Oriana, a champion which we've seen everyone farm into incredible kind of levels with. Shivana as well in that top lane for Wicked gives you that extra added ball delivery system with his ultimate. So there's the, the makings of a wombo combo on the side of Alliance. If a Shivana dives in, if Nami's tidal wave is there. But what is good about the composition is they're well-rounded. They have fairly strong engage, fairly strong flank. They've got strong disengage with Nami. So they have the jack of all trades, so to speak. And it's just going to be up to Alliance to pick the right moments to engage or disengage. Well, now that the players have picked their champions, which lineup do you guys think is stronger? Tweet hashtag CWWin or all win to at LOL Esports to let us know. And we'll check the results in game. 90% was the vote from lolesports.com. I don't think it's going to change in terms of who you guys are voting for, but I think the percentage might drop a little bit. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, you've got quite a, uh, a few strong champions on the side of Copenhagen Wolves. Twitch has been somewhat hit in terms of his champion numbers in 4.10, but the itemization is more in his favor. So if mm -hmm. he can get to the likes of that Ghost Blade, Blade of the Ring King, maybe Infinity Edge stage, he has the ability to just shred through all of the members of Alliance. And we'll see if Copenhagen Wolves can get there. Well, let's have a look. We are going into game for the Copenhagen Wolves versus Alliance 2. 
very different stories that these teams have. Opposite ends of the spectrum almost, with the Copenhagen Wolves lacking behind the rest of the league in last place. And Alliance destroying pretty much everyone. Only lost two games so far this split. Yeah, the first thing I want to highlight is Unlimited starting with a All Consumables kickoff. Got a bunch of wards as well as the cookie. And for Unlimited, this is going to be one of two things. Either Copenhagen Wolves want to use that vision to make some early plays and get maybe jungle invades down or roams around the map. Uh, thanks to Brahms passive and the, the ambush power of Twitch, you can actually set up very good sort of ganks. Alternatively, it's going to be an incredibly defensive start for Woolite and Unlimited, and they're just going to play the extended vision game to ensure that Shook doesn't land any, you know, three, four, five minute ganks. Well, there is the pink ward placement. And I'm not sure that they can actually see the Alliance ward there. I think it might be just a little bit out of range. We'll find that out though as Alliance start to move forward. You see that they're actually going to have the duo lane on the bottom side of the map. Looks like Wicked going to take or look for that one versus one in the top lane. Although, Romeo wandering around down there, we do indeed see that it can't actually see it. Copenhagen Wolves can see the vision. Alliance can't see Copenhagen Wolves' yep. ward. So in terms of CW, they do have that small vision advantage. And you can see them grouping up uh, to go for this red buff invade. So this is going to potentially just delay Shook. There's no implication of a lane swap in this scenario. Copenhagen Wolves didn't even get the ward. Just wandered on straight through it. So they will be aware of that. And it looks like Altard is actually, uh, once again, <laughs> going to ignore the ward. So, cool story, bro. Yeah, save that gold for later. That's what I'm going to go What with. I do like, though, is in the bottom lane, Young Buck, with the assistance of Woolite, is going to secure their own red buff. So it is a buff denial, as well as a uh, delay on the side of Shook and Nif. Nif is obviously going to get to lane late, but the trade-off is the fact that Woolite is going to be, you know, coming to lane very late himself. They're going to jump on Froggen. Oh, going straight in there. The prison comes down, but I think Froggen might have enough to survive this one. And the Contaminate comes out, burning down there as well. Poison ticking away, but Froggen survived. But that was a scary moment for Alliance. Very scary indeed. Froggen's flash is burned, but count on bird both flash and ignite for that. Now, Shook is the next target. And Kaltar coming across and forcing an early flash out of Alliance and doing so well They're about this. Die. They need to be careful here. Froggen's still very low, not recalling. And then the Root Prison Leech, he goes in. And Airwax gets the first blood for the Wolves. This is a very different style for the Wolves that we're seeing. And so far, it's caught Alliance completely off guard. Based purely on the champion picks that they have, because Twitch plus Braum are such good champions at picking and surprising your opponents. Look, they've got Shook now. Oh. Going oh, low as well. Woolite was a bit scared there. I've actually been locked up by Nami if it have gone anywhere near turret range. But another little bit of a let off there for Alliance as Shuck went low. Didn't have his flash available because he used it just before that to get away from uh, the invade from the Copenhagen Wolves in the jungle. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to keep an eye on the average levels of both of these teams. Because of the fact that uh, Copenhagen Wolves are roaming and trying to set these ganks up, Tabs has been solo farming a lane. So he's got more experience than what Woolite will have. Even though Copenhagen Wolves have got that additional kill, because they've been moving around the lane, it becomes a, a battle of who can get the most experience and CS, especially for champions like Jackson Rise. So it looks like the lane's now going to somewhat standardize with Kaltar putting himself in a 1v2 and Copenhagen Wolves putting their AD carry and support in the mid lane. Another reason I like this little move from the Wolves is if Woolite and Unlimited want to go to support Airwax or go to the side lanes, they have more options to go through their jungle and also to invade Alliance's jungle. So the makings of an aggressive map-based uh, positional play from the Wolves. I saw that. The bottom lane of Alliance feeling, I think, a little bit uh, unsafe. This is a German word. I don't know where that one came from there. Good job, Joe. Speaking too much German these days. But forcing them back. And actually, Young are going to go aggressive onto Wicked here. Let's get the stun down. But Wicked actually turning things around. This could be a close one if he decides to go all in. Young Wook dives across. Wicked forced to use his flash away. And that was a close one again. Very strong start for the Copenhagen Wolves. We talked about how Brown can 
move around the map, and he's already running to the top lane. If Wicked had not recalled, Unlimited would have considered going for that tower dive. And he's got the support of Airwax. Now, this is especially important for Alliance because their support, their numbers, comes from the bottom lane with Tabs and Nif, and they don't have the ability to you know, move halfway across the map at a very quick pace. So if Copenhagen Wolves keep punishing and keep invading, they can even tower dive. There's a minion wave in the top, and it looks like they're going for it. Oh, now we're going to start stacking that passive up. And when I say start, they start, and then they stop straight away. Wicked able to clear out that minion wave and stop the wolves coming right under it. They're actually farming between the towers here. And Alliance are going to want to stop Airwax from doing that. Unlimited has stuck around as well. And now it looks like they're going to be roaming towards that middle lane. Yeah, so Froggen's having a difficult time against Woolite, uh, purely because Woolite is just getting those auto attacks down using his passive fairly effectively. And if Froggen keeps trying to trade with Woolite, obviously he's going to burn through his mana pool and he loses it. The one thing that Froggen is doing well is farming under his tower. He's got a 14 CS lead over Kautard, who's currently trying to friend off both Tabs and Nif. So we'll see which mid laner and which duo comes out ahead because Woolite is falling behind Tabs thanks to that added uh, poke damage that he's trying to put down on Froggen. So Unlimited again, looking like he's going to wander. Are they going to try and get in for a second time behind Froggen? There is a ward down Unlimited. Will scan it out. There is the cocoon landing as well. But Shook needs to be really careful. That's a lot of damage. Stunt comes down. Shook going to have to repel. But he's coming right back on top of them. Have they got the damage? They do. This Airwax have picked up the kill. Two kills for Airwax in the opening stages of the game thanks to a very aggressive, very intelligent uh, invades. Unlimited is, is playing a, a, a roaming support. Yes, he is a level down uh, behind Nif, and he doesn't have any GP10, but he is giving gold to Airwax thanks to the fact that he's roaming and the pressure and the presence that he is applying. So very good play from Copenhagen Wolves, but the question is, can they keep it up? If they get the outer turrets down, how do they continue the aggressive plays if they extend this lead even further? Yeah, that's the, the real question for me on this one. We, we've seen the Wolves get ahead before, they struggle to close out some of the games that they've actually won when they've started to fall behind or been a little bit unsafe, which is the right word this time. Uh, they've sometimes let those leads kind of slip away from them, just looking like they weren't really sure what the, the overall plan was and what the next move was. So that's going to be, especially against, uh, against Alliance here, their decision making has got to be really on point. Yeah, and, and again, you know, even though Alliance are two kills down. If you look at CS, they're winning top lane, they're winning mid lane, they're winning um, AD carry, and there's four separating the junglers. Now, you do have to count in the fact that Airwax has those kill gold, of course, but Alliance are still keeping up from a mechanical standpoint, and they're only 500 gold behind. So, yes, it feels like Copenhagen Wolves are making all the plays, and they are definitely dictating the tempo of this game. But the moment Copenhagen Wolves slip up, or the moment one of those invades goes wrong, Alliance can turn it around. Alliance can punish a bad dive or a bad engage, and we'll see if this is the turn. Doesn't look, look like this. it, though. Oh, going in for Frog, and he wisely just delayed his move back there so that the Q from Airwax wouldn't connect onto him. Airwax still level 5, though, so he doesn't have the kick available to really control Frog, and Frog has already got his ultimate, so underneath the tower, that shockwave could be dangerous. Wicked actually going to dive on through, on towards Youngbok, who turns around, puts in the stun. Wicked falling a little bit low from that one, and Youngbok coming out on top of that trade. So trading uh, ultimates for ultimates, and, you know, it really felt like Wicked was just trying to shove the wave more than anything else. Um, ends up getting you know, a, a bit more damage from Youngbuck than he was anticipating, but holding his own, grabs himself that Giant's Belt. And look at the movement now from Copenhagen Wolves. They've grouped up around the Dragon Pit, and they're continuing this, this jungle invade game where both Unlimited and Airwax are just trying to get in Alliance's face and trying to make their life very difficult. So Woolite, he's got the support, and they've caught Frogger just a little. Oh, this is going to be a lot of damage, and a flash was burned there by Frogger. Having to get away to safety, knew that if that passive of Braum would have be procced and stunned up under his tower, then he was facing a bit of a problem. Meanwhile, Youngbuck's come back into lane, gone. Vamp set to double Doran's blade, has used his teleport here. Wicked's is still available, so that could become a factor. And that all stems from Wicked's engage with his Dragon's Descent, because he cleared the wave out and bought time for him to go back by and run back to lane. Oh, the tries I've shook. Yeah, going in there once again. The kick coming down. Shook actually reacting really quickly there with a the flash. Gonna get the cocoon down as well. Can he get on top of Unlimited? He had the ball. 
maybe looking for a shockwave setup, but nothing happening there. But the wolves trying again, and they're gonna get the tower for it this time. So that dive, even though it didn't get a kill, they got the flash out of Shook, and they were able to secure their first tower of the game. So it's quite smart. It's not over yet. They still want Froggen. Limited coming in, and that could be it. Good shockwave coming down to Woolite, but it's not really got damage, and Froggen is gonna go down. Woolite picks up his first kill of the game. This is a completely different Wolves. They're looking really strong. Yes, it is, and they are playing with a purpose. The one thing that I really like about this setup is while Copenhagen Wolves have been super aggressive and have been in Alliance's jungle the entirety of this game, Youngbuck and Kautard have been doing their best to CS. Kautard is obviously suffering because he's you know, in a 1v2 setup, but Ryze and Jax are in lane, they are getting levels, and they're trying to get as much CS as they can. Copenhagen Wolves are going to secure this Dragon uncontested, and they're going to extend that gold lead to around 3,000, which is very, very good for 10 minutes. This is the number eight team that has only picked up three wins in six weeks, seven weeks, in fact. And they are pushing Alliance around in the laning phase. Really strong start by the Copenhagen Wolves. Wasn't expecting such a strong start, but at the same time, I think the Wolves themselves realized that Guys, we need to step this up. This this current trend that we've got, only three wins on the board, needs to really change around. And so far, they've made some good steps to making that work out here in their final, uh, in their first game of today's Wicked here. Again, going to go towards Youngbuck, who pops his ultimate unlimited. Coming from the backside as well, so Wicked might have to be a little careful. Froggen actually coming around as well. Shuk will now join in as Youngbuck will leap strike away. Wicked's got his ulti available. Are they going to try and dive it? I there don't was, think so. There was no shockwave for Froggen, so I think that had to be a, a hesitation factor. With the minion wave collecting to the tower, if the wolves stick around, there is still the possibility of a dive. Dragon's Descent is up for Wicked, but he's going to back away from this one. And <laughs> Unlimited, as manly as Braum is, just forces him away. The thing that I like about uh, the wolves' play is they haven't relented. Even when their dives have failed and their skill shots have missed, oh. they carry on. And we'll see if Tabs can get away. Oh, there is the flash going to come out. But they managed to land the Q and then the kick right back into Kautard, who will finish this one off. That's his Airwax that gets it. Puts himself 3-0-1 on the killing spree. And I said that Airwax surely will be a big factor in this game. And so far, it's really paid they off. Right Wicked. now, Wicked is in trouble as well. Unlimited going to go in, actually getting knocked back there. He's trying to man this one up with the shield and have a go at Wicked, who turns around. Meanwhile, Nip going to be caught. Out. Here comes Woolite from the side. Good bubble on to Woolite, but it won't save him. So four kills now for Airwax. In the previous setup, he was trying to let that last hit go to Countard, and unfortunately it didn't work out. It was a very good flash kick, which I didn't even think he was going to do, which allowed them to get their kill onto Tabs. You do have to think that if Airwax is going to continue this level of performance, he needs that gold to be going onto the carries. You need Twitch, Jackson, Rise to be the super beefy, super farmed members of Copenhagen Wolves. If they want to continue this dominance in the mid to late game. But they've got their second tower, they've got a bigger gold lead, and there's no sign that Copenhagen Wolves are stopping. That's another bust deal oh, by Nip. Nip got to get caught out completely by this one. The Q from Airwax has landed. No follow through though. Was already underneath the turret. Wicked meanwhile may be forced to back away completely from this top lane. TP is still not up, so he seems a bit reluctant to leave this lane, knowing he'll miss a lot of farm if he does. Yeah, this is the first time I would say in, in a few weeks where Alliance have been behind by a significant margin and they need to play the catch-up game. This is something that Alliance, I feel, would be familiar with in the spring split, where they were struggling, where they did have troubles. And we need to see if they still have that ability to dig down, to rotate around the map, and to force objectives. Something that SK does very well when they're in scenarios like this is group up and either tower dive their opponents or react to their opponents when they're pushing side lanes. And I think Alliance, they made a gesture of that earlier, where they were grouping up for a potential dive or kill on Youngbuck. And obviously it was thwarted by Unlimited Presence. Well, I didn't recall as I thought it was going to do down in this bottom lane. Instead, he sticks around, gets himself some more, more farm, and has actually got more at the moment than that of Tabs, plus that 1-0-1 one, one scoreline. Look at this, the Wolves again grouping up, looking for a bit of a pick, but I'm not sure that they're going to get it here. There's a couple of wards down already from Alliance. That's a good pink ward, though, from the Wolves to clear out blue buff. Yeah, very, very smart play. And, you know, we, we talked about the levels. We talked about how we need to track how the team's oh. doing, and Wolves are actually ahead in most of the metrics. Very good cocoon from Shook is probably going to save Frog, and I think he, he most likely was going to get away. He does have flash, and a flash over the wall. So, Copenhagen Wolves, 
just by sheer presence and positioning, force a summoner spell out of Froggen. And they're keeping this up. They're keeping this level of control up. And very importantly, they're keeping their vision up to allow them to keep making these aggressive plays. I think Unlimited needs to grow a spectacular mustache as well because he is doing incredibly well. This whole roaming Brom, which has been so effective for them up until now. Interested to see whether that can continue for them. We have seen a couple more items coming in. See Blade of the Ruin King is now done for Warlight. On the other side, Tab's going for Trinity Force as his first item here on Cogmore. Yeah, and Unlimited's foregone any of those GP10 items. Yes, he's got a Sidestone, which you could argue is GP10. We'll get back to that as Wicked as Fighting Young Buck. And he might actually be able to take him down with this one. This is a lot of damage coming in from Wicked. He's going to have to go underneath the tower. Has his flash available. Will flash in there. One more should do it. Youngbuck will jump off to the wall. And here comes Unlimited to save the day once again. And Youngbuck getting away there with just a slither of health remaining. Yeah, you can definitely see the moustache growing in Unlimited's face because that is such a good play. Once again, being in the right place at the right time. And while it's Airwax that is securing the kills, it has been Unlimited's presence and movement that has really allowed that to happen. He's been involved in a few of the kills, and what I really like about Unlimited is he's involved in the tower dives, he's involved in the defenses, and he's reading Alliance's movements very, very effectively. Doesn't need to be a tiny bit careful, though, because he is, in theory, up against the top laner alone. But nevertheless, uh, Youngbuck is going to make it back to the lane, and he's got his Blade of the Rune King completed, so Youngbuck also hitting those important oh. item spikes. Oh, well, I'm going to sneak up on Tabs, and there's a surprise. He's going to pop the rat and tap, tap. That's a lot of damage coming in. Tabs is going to go down. The tidal wave from the side. Good bubble. Actually, no, the bubble missed. Warlight turning it around there. Ignite was down. Airwax will come in to support, and Warlight's going to survive. Good pick kill. Very smart play, and this is what Warlight should be looking to do elsewhere as well. He's picked up a kill on Tabs. He's going to delay his next item even further. And what's even more important is the timing of that kill, because as soon as they've taken Tabs down, it's allowing Copenhagen Wars to get another dragon and extend this gold lead even further. I am, I am absolutely shocked because the Wolves have never played this well all year long. And Woolite, he wants Nif now. And he's probably going to get him here as well. There's a bubble coming out. Doesn't connect. And the finisher, Woolite now on the killing screen. We saw him there on the camera. Gave a big shout. And now Youngbok, though, could be in trouble. Froggen's coming in. Shockwave is available. There it is. In position to finish off. They don't even need to use the Shockwave. Didn't need it at all. Youngbok just gets dropped by lines. And we touched on how one of the only tools Alliance will have to make up this gold deficit is the tower dives, and they pull it off on the isolated member in the top lane. So Alliance are going to get their first tower of the game, going to pull back the gold difference, and the rest of the Wolves are now pushing the other lanes. Look at bottom in a turret. Look at mid in a turret. Joe, in the pregame, I called out Airwax as well as Woolite and said, since losing Amazing and Forgiven, these two guys need to step up. 4-0-1, 3-0-1. They've definitely told me to sit down and shut up. They have. And, uh, well, you can't really argue with this performance. Both of them doing so well. And now the Wolves continue to pressure on this inner turret. They're going to take that. Alliance can't defend it. And where has this what Copenhagen Wolves team been for the last seven weeks? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. And I, you just can't do anything but really praise the decision making. They've got a massive lead with a very good late game uh, team composition. And yes, Alliance scales incredibly well at the same time. Cogmo, Elise, uh, Cogmo Oriana, Shivana will do very well in the late game. And I feel like in terms of team fights, Alliance should have a little more um, in their back pockets because of all this CC. But if they group up at all, and Bram gets in with a multi-man knockup uh, from Glacial Fisher and, and Youngbuck gets in there, that's scary. Alliance, let's see if they can get Woolard. The answer's no. Oh, stealthing up, getting out of that one, of course. The stealth, one of the little changes to him for 4.10 that we thought may dissuade a few people. And actually, it has. We've seen less uh, Twitch play in 4.10 when we compare that with 4.9. But honestly, what we'll like showing here that he is most definitely viable. Getting up to that Blade of the Ruin King, catching out both Tabs and Nif here in that bottom lane. Sound at 3 0 on, and now he's got a Ghost Blade. Yeah, it's all about the picks for Alliance. Because they are, are very far behind in terms of itemization on their primary carries, if Alliance are able to force Copenhagen Wolf's hand and group up for tower dives or, you know, force a rotation and then punish a misposition, that's how Alliance can make this gold, uh, gold lead back. But they also need to avoid getting caught up. Look at Woolite. He's looking for Ratatat. 
Oh, now Wax is coming in from the side. They're going to try and kick Tavs back. The flash came in. Woolite did manage to get one kill. And now they're going for more. Shook is already really low. The Q not quite got the range there. And I think Alliance might be able to walk out of this one. Brogan just coming back will get the slow onto Kautard. And Unlimited. Airwax, though, is still flanking around the side. They may go for this one. Unlimited still has his ultimate available. Airwax still has his kick as well. So if they can get in there, kick one man back, they may be able to get something started. Tabs is going to walk in. This is a face check. This is not good news for them. Airwax does get one. Shockwave finally comes down. But there's the knockup of Unlimited. Tabs is going to be focused here and killed off. And the Copenhagen Wolves picking up more kills. This is exquisite play from Copenhagen Wolves. This all started from Woolite's surprising alliance. He blew Nif up before Nif could even throw the tidal wave down. And then the Copenhagen Wolves just chased in all the right ways and managed to pick up even more kills. Five kills on Airwax, five kills on Woolite. They grabbed their fourth tower of the game and they're going to continue the siege. Alliance cannot team fight. They are so far behind that the only way they can win a straight up fight is if they catch Copenhagen Wolves completely by surprise. And for the time being, I don't think that's possible because the Wolves have just done such a good job at vision and done such a good job at moving around the map. And they are making Alliance look like SK Gaming yesterday. The way Alliance punished SK, Copenhagen Wolves are punishing Alliance. Well, I mean, everyone I think expected this to be the complete opposite, the Alliance doing this to the Copenhagen Wolves, but Wolves showing that they might be down at the bottom of the league and only three wins under their belt up until now, but it's not over until the end of the season comes around and they're playing for their livelihoods here and you can see that there seems to be a, a newfound motivation for the Wolves. It's also almost as if someone's given a kick up the backside and said, guys, get it together because we can't afford to keep going like this. 20 minutes into the game and the Wolves have still not let up this, this presence in Alliance's jungle and they're going to continue pre uh, making moves. Copenhagen Wolves are going to discover this ward from Alliance and Alliance can't contest. I mean, Alliance really can't pick these fights. They're, you know, 8,000 gold down. There or thereabouts. And we haven't seen, we haven't seen any initiations. We haven't seen any plays from Alliance because they haven't been able to. They've been playing reactively and they've been playing at the Wolves' tempo. Baron, though. Something that could easily change this game. Well, like, oh, he's playing dangerously. Actually, he's going to catch out Shook. That's a decent chunk of damage. Are they going to go back towards Baron now after doing that damage to the Alliance jungle? I think Baron would be such a, a good way to lose this game now for the Copenhagen Wolves. I have to say it because nope. we've seen it before, but they're doing a good job here of keeping Alliance really busy That's a shock in wave. that mid lane. We are going to see the damage coming down. Shockwave used one limited, tanking up. And meanwhile, the Baron is going lower and lower and lower. Will they be able to finish it off in They've time? It. They do. The Wolves pick up the Baron and another great move for them. Meanwhile, Woolite's going to stealth up once again. Can he catch anyone out? Who's he going to go for? He's going to go for Tap. The damage from Ratatap Tap, but a good bubble for the disengage. But well, they're losing this tower. Surely. Alliance got completely baited into that fight. 5v2, they threw a bunch of ultimates at the Wolves, didn't even get the kill. So a 23 minute Baron for the Copenhagen Wolves, it opens them up to an inhibitor turret, an inner turret rather, and Alliance were already playing passive, were already playing defensive against the Wolves. With the 10,000 gold lead and Baron buff, Alliance need to turtle under the inhibitor turrets and not leave for another 15 minutes to try and make up this gold difference and become relevant again, because they're simply being outclassed. Destroyed, aren't they really? There's, there's no real kind way to say it from Alliance's side, but the Copenhagen Wolves coming absolutely flying into this game. You heard from Youngbuck, special tactics may be needed against Lyme. and they've got nothing to lose coming into this game. And maybe that's what's been a problem for the Copenhagen Wolves, that they've had all this pressure on them, knowing that things aren't going so well. Maybe they needed a kind of pressure off scenario where no one expected for them to win. 90% of you guys on lolliesports.com vote for Alliance to win this game. It seems like these 90% votes seem to be a bit of a curse for some of these teams. It, it, okay, if this game continues going the way that it is, Alliance will have lost two games where the public opinion was 90% and above. It happened against the Super Hot Crew at the beginning of the split. It's happening right now in front of your eyes. And those special tactics, we assumed were going to be picks. We assume that we're going to be unique champions because Young Buck is not averse to playing oddball champions. And it wasn't that. It was the 2v1 mid lane. And it was just a very, very heavy map 
based strategy. And thanks to the Wolves actually finding the kills, and more importantly, maintaining vision control. That's what's allowed them to punish Alliance. Every time you look at that mini-map, there is one, two, three, six, seven wards down on the mini-map, and it's just so good for them. 71%. It's funny how 25 minutes can change everyone's mind. Hard to argue. I actually expected it to be more like 90% for the Wolves uh, at this point, considering how this game has now gone. The Wolves just walks in on in, finishing off that inner turret, looking now maybe towards the inhibitor. Will that going to get bubbled up? Unlimited going to block everything out, though. It's very important for Nif to time his tidal wave. If he throws that down into Unlimited's uh, Unbreakable Shield, it will just completely mitigate that spell. So Alliance need to be baiting out the Unbreakable Shield from Unlimited, and uh, then Vin and Shook's in trouble. Shook getting caught, last second repel though, will mean that he can stay alive, but he's forced away that least five versus four underneath the turret, actually four versus four, because look at Jax, Youngbuck is pushing out that bottom lane as well, TP available if he needs to get in for a fight. Yeah, we need to see how Alliance decides to defend this. No. Uh, key spells have been used yet. And Tabs is fighting so far behind. He's only got a Cutlass and Triforce. That's a good bubble. Two-man bubble, but there we see. Actually, uh, Airwax going very deep onto it. Tidal Wave does come out. Unlimited uses. Also, there's a two-man Shock Wave. He's got the AD carry. He's also summoned a heal being used. And there's a turn around. Well, I've dominated. Is he going to get shook as well? I think there's enough damage from the poison. It's a double for Wall Light, putting him up to 7-0-1. And this is the in him. They're definitely going to get the in him with Froggen and Shook down. They going to secure the objective, it may not be over, as Youngbuck has got a minion wave on the bottom half of the turret. There's a minion wave pushing up the middle lane as well. The Copenhagen Wolves have got 20 seconds before Alliance are back at full force, and they are punishing the base of Alliance. Yep, this is going to be a second inhibitor for the Copenhagen Wolves, leaving just that mid lane, which as you rightly pointed out, is pushing in favour of the Wolves. And a swift move there, I thought with that shot wave coming down, when the bubble starting it off, that the Copenhagen Wolves might be in a little bit of trouble, but they're just so far ahead in this game that it's even hard when Alliance get a good opener like that to finish off the kills. There are no words to describe what is happening. Kowtard's been jumped on, but it's Shook, the one that you are in fear of his life. We'll see if he can get away. No. Nope. Nope. Well, like, gonna get that one legendary now at 8 0 1. And they're just gonna bully their way in onto the turret. You see the Alliance backing away from it completely, knowing that they can't stand and defend, and they've only got their Nexus turret and the Nexus left. I, I have no idea where Copenhagen Wolves have found this level of performance. They have just m melted Alliance in every single regard. Individual play, team play, map movement. I mean, even the swag flash away from the bubble, and Woolite is going to look for more. And there we see Wicked diving in. They use the shockwave. They don't even get the support down, and Woolite is just dumping on them from the backside there. Couldn't quite get the damage to finish off another kill, but he may have done enough damage to force them away and have a good go on these in him turrets. Here he goes once again around the side, going to go on towards Tab, who's surely going to go down. No, he seems to have got away, at least for now, back onto the fountain. Got no health remaining. A kill for Rise, and this is surely the game for the Wolves. They're very, very low though. They need to be a little bit careful here. Well, they're going to rip through those Nexus turrets. First one already going down, second one full HP, but Alliance coming back out of the base in full health. I think that's enough for that push now for the Wolves. There are so many super minions for Alliance to deal with. They don't even have the items to clear these waves super quickly. Towers are going down. There's nothing left for the Alliance base <laughs> to defend. They've held on to it. Oh, the turrets, the minions got it. There's only a Nexus remaining at 28 minutes on the clock. And Copenhagen Wolves are going to close this game out at some point in the not too distant future. And if you'd have said to me, Joe, Alliance are gonna get destroyed today by the Copenhagen Wolves in maybe half an hour game and only get one kill and one turret, I probably would have just laughed at you and said, I don't know what you are even thinking about there because this outcome did not look possible considering the form that both of these teams have been. Alliance here struggling with the super minions in their own base right now with that Nexus already taking a little bit of a beating. And look at this, the Wolves have healed up. They spent all the gold that they had. Some of them are sat on 3,000 gold after that, and they're going to come straight back in and try and win it. There's next to nothing Alliance to, can do to defend this push. Copenhagen Wolves looks like they're just going to focus the Nexus. There down. we go, Dive comes in. We are going to see the Shockwave coming out, but Shock going to be focused. Woolite now legendary. There is a Dive onto the fountain. Does go down, but Woolite gets another kill. Nexus is finished off, and in less than half an hour, the Copenhagen Wolves pull off the shock of the split so far and take down the Lions. Wow. Now oh! well, that howl is something we have not heard in a while. Woolite 
Wollard was ecstatic after that win. 11-0-2. His team played phenomenally around him, and the Copenhagen Wolves completely decimates Alliance. Alliance never get a chance to do anything. They never get a chance to fight back. I'm a little bit lost for words from this one. I did not expect today of all days to go like this. And it wasn't even a close, I don't want to say hard ball because the Copenhagen Wolves obviously came into this very prepared, but it wasn't a close game. Alliance didn't really have anything to say about it. As I said, they got two kills.